Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Art of Sculpting series, where we are walking through various sculpting workflows in Blender. This time, it's about sculpting a female bust, as well as sculpting her hair. So, the challenge with a woman's face is nailing that feminine quality. You may have watched my realistic male head series, where I regrettably sped through the sculpting process at warp speed, uh, but with men, it's typically much easier to achieve masculinity because their features are more prominent and bold. With women, the features are more soft and subtle. This makes women generally more difficult to sculpt. So uh, I've gathered a few reference images to guide me along. If you look for your own reference, I recommend that you find as many different angles of the face as possible, not just a front and side. So let's get started in Blender, where I have uh, my reference sheet open and ready to be looked at. Uh, we'll start with a mesh UV sphere. And uh, I want to move this up to be kind of the head shape, what we'll start out with. But we also want some shoulders and a neck. So I want to jump into edit mode and move this up a little bit, about to right there, leaving enough room for a neck and shoulder a piece of geometry, which we will pull out of this sphere with dynamic topology. And the reason I did that, uh, I made that move in edit mode just now was to keep the pivot at the origin. So I can rename this object now. Let's uh, call it sculpt head. And we can jump into sculpt mode now. I'll hit T to bring back my um, sculpt tools and scroll down to turn on some additional options like dynamic topology. A detail size of 30 will be great. And what else? Um, options, I wanna turn on threaded sculpt and also unified size and strength settings. Then in symmetry, I wanna make sure X symmetry is turned on, which it is. Okay, cool. Now, uh, in order to pull out geometry for my neck and shoulders, We'll use the uh, snake hook brush and I'll jump to the front orthographic view and let's start to pull out a neck. I think that'll work pretty good. And then pull out shoulders. And uh, at the bottom of our sculpture, we'll just sort of cut off the torso, similar to in museum sculptures where they have sculpted like a famous person's face, cut it off just above the torso and place it on a pedestal. That's the same kind of thing we're doing here. And uh, shoulders are a bit too wide, I think. Something like that. Okay, you'll notice that we have some stretching and skewing uh, in our geometry. Now by default, dynamic topology uh, will create new geometry, will remesh areas if the polygons are larger than 30 pixels as defined by this detail size. But if they're smaller than 30 pixels, for example, right now, um, these faces here should be smaller than 30 pixels. And as I pull out, they stretch instead of generating new topology. So I can fix this by um, enabling collapse short edges in the topology drop down menu. Let's turn that on. And now no matter what the um, polygon face size is, it will um, remesh that area. So this is great for starting a dynamic topology sculpture because it keeps all the geometry very even. So to fix this stretching here, I'll uh, switch to the uh, inflate brush, make the strength really, really small with shift F, and then start to stroke over that area. And we can see the uh, geometry has updated and it's much more even. And uh, as far as the shoulders and torso is concerned, it's clearly way too skinny in the uh, Y direction. So if I want to push the geometry in the Y direction, I can simply lock the X and Z axis um, in our options drop down. And now when I inflate, let's switch over to my pen tablet to make this a little easier. As I inflate, we can see that it only is manipulated in the Y direction. So we can add um, the additional meat to this volume. Front and back. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Perhaps a little more in the shoulders. Neck needs a little bit more as well. Okay, cool. Now let's pull out a jaw structure. First, making the face a little skinnier from the front. Yeah, about like that. Back to the inflate brush with a fairly powerful strength. I'll just start to add a chin structure in here. There we go, smooth that out. Then with my crease brush, let's see, by default it's pushing inwards. So um, up here below the brush settings, 
let's turn on add instead of subtract for the default behavior. That way it matches the behavior of our other brushes. And let's cut in behind the jaw and even that out with our smooth brush. There we go. Sort of defining the jawline. At least starting to define that. I think the back of the head is a little bit too far back, so let's push that forward. In general, the whole head sort of needs to come forward. Smooth it out, kind of attempt to keep it as spherical as we can and smooth instead of lumpy. Right now it's fairly lumpy. Okay, I think that's looking a little bit better. Let's uh, make the front of the head a little bit skinnier above the ear or where the ear will be. There we go. That's feeling fairly natural. I think the head is perhaps a little bit too high, making the neck too long. So I'll jump into edit mode. Uh, then in wireframe mode, choose circle select. Jump back to my mouse and let's select the head volume. Turn on proportional editing with Alt O and now move that down. There we go, giving a little bit better proportion to the head and neck. There we go, I think that looks pretty good. All right, so this is the absolute basic shape so far. I can start refining, starting with the torso. Okay, yeah, the torso. Um, I'll choose my crease brush to define the bottom edge of our bust sculpture. So let's start cutting that in there like that. Very nice. Do the same thing to the back. Perhaps using pinch instead. There we go. And, uh, oh, I don't have enable dynamic turned on. Let's uh, turn that back on because I went to edit mode. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. Still, the shoulders are perhaps a little bit too wide. And there's too much of a curve to the neck where it connects, where the neck needs to be a little bit straighter like a column. Okay, now how about we cut in the collarbone shape? I'm going to make kind of a sideways V stroke, as we can see over here in our reference. Right here, we want to make this stroke. So with the crease brush, we'll cut in like this. Pull it back towards the shoulder. Smooth that out. And then continue with the collarbone shape by cutting down and then towards the chest. There we go. Something like that. Maybe pull the bottom of the throat backwards, inflate sort of the Adam's apple area, slowly but surely getting that column-like neck. And maybe the neck is still a little bit too long. I don't know. I'll give it some time, see how it feels a little bit later. Okay, so we have the basic collarbone shape. Let's inflate at the bottom of the throat in between the two collarbone knobs. Smooth that as it goes into the throat. There we go, that's looking pretty good. Pretty good as the first um, layer of refinement. Let's move up into the head now to do a little bit of refining there. Continuing to push in at the back of the um, jawline, just a little bit. Yeah, about like that. And now I'm ready to pull out a piece of ear geometry. So with the inflate brush, I will, let's see where to place this, put it about the middle of the head, right behind the jawline, increase the strength of my inflate brush, and then um, simply inflate a large chunk of geometry, which will become the ear, pushing it straight out. I think that's good. Now let's um, pull it backward towards the back of the head and to be flatter against the head, giving us that um, ear angle. 
All right, that's not too bad. Let's uh, look at uh, how the ear should look in comparison to the face. And look at our reference, kind of match that. There we go, that's pretty good. Then smooth out the connection from the ear to the jawline. There we go, that's a pretty good start to the ear. I am happy with that. And I think I'm ready to start on the face. So the first thing I like to do with faces is to push in the ocular cavities uh, with our inflate brush. Strength still pretty strong. And the eyes, you can see over here in our reference, sit on the equator of the cranium, lining up with the top of our ear. So if I look at my sculpt, it looks like the top of the ear is a little bit too high. It's not at the equator, so let's pull that down. Yeah, that's a little bit better. And back to the inflate brush, lining up our ocular cavity. Let's just push that in. And that'll look pretty creepy, but this is representative of our skull where our eyeballs will eventually sit. And then I'll move on to the cheekbone or the zygomatic bone as it's officially called and just very subtly puff that out to give us some cheeks or some cheek structure just the beginnings of it and now for the temple I need to create a structure called the temporal line which is part of the skull underneath and that um, is achieved by inflating uh, pushing inwards right at the temple very slightly and smoothing it out and by smoothing it creates this ridge right here and we can see that over here in the reference as well very subtle especially on women it needs to be pretty subtle but it does need to be there okay so that should start to look more like a skull to you and uh, let's pull out a nose structure with the inflate brush just create a nasal column right down the middle trying to create the angle, like a, the triangular shape from the side in profile, about like that, and then also inflate the nostrils. There we go. It's a very rough nasal structure. It's a good start. And once we have that, we can switch to the crease brush and start to cut the nasal labial fold. And that starts up here at the nostril, we want to keep it fairly subtle by cutting it first and then smoothing it out and just continuing to refine that structure. But I don't want to get too specific with it yet because I'm just hinting at it, roughing out the um, facial anatomy at the moment. So we'll go back and inflate that area, give it some meat, connecting with the cheek. And then we can define our chin again with the crease brush not such a high strength. Let's just cut the upper curvature of our chin. Smooth all of that out. Let's see, I can pull the bottom of the nasal labial fold back a little bit to give the um, oral region a little more uh, curvature. Okay, I think that's feeling pretty good. At this point, we should have a very scary zombie looking face. Um, also, with the mouth looking like Neo from The Matrix when he first meets Agent Smith and his skin grows over his mouth. So, if it looks like that, then this is a good place to be. And looking at the nose again, I think I can pull back the glabella or the bridge of the nose. There we go, and we are well on our way to um, defining our female's uh, face. So at this point, I'm ready to add some geometry for our eyeballs. And it'll be easier to just use spherical geometry rather than try and maintain a spherical shape um, simply with sculpting tools. So in object mode, let's add a mesh UV sphere. Rotate in the X direction 90 degrees. Let's move it up. And uh, before I put it into position, I want to create some helpful materials to define the pupil and iris of our eyeball. 
So uh, I will smooth the normals first in our tool panel. Let's see, smooth shading, tab into edit mode, create three material slots, one, two, three. First material slot, create a new texture. I am in Blender internal, by the way. We'll rename this first material white, and for the material itself, we will change the color to white and the intensity from 0.8 all the way up to one. And then in the next material slot, new material, let's make this one kind of a bluish color. And then in the third material slot, new material, um, oh, I didn't name the other one. This one's called black. And then the middle one we'll call blue. For the black one, the color will be black, as you probably guessed, and the specular intensity will turn down to zero. Okay, so on the mesh, I'll select this geometry pole at the very center, control plus to grow the selection for this first row of faces and assign the black material. Now I'll select um, the next row of faces and assign the blue material. And now we have an iris and a pupil. And this will really help us to get the eyes correct. So change our pivot point to median. Let's scale this object down. And uh, let's see how big to make it. When starting off, I typically make the eyeball size about the same as the upper half of the ear. So if that kind of fits, then uh, theoretically the ear should be a proper size and the eyeball should be a proper size, or at least starting out. Okay, so that looks good. Let's bring it forward a little bit more. About like that. Okay, let's add a mirror modifier to get our left eye. And uh, for the mirror object, um, I can't use the object's origin because, uh, well, it's being mirrored right now, but you can't tell. So let's choose um, our sculpt head since that origin is at uh, the center of the world and we have proper symmetry in the x-axis now. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's rename this object eyes. Jump back to sculpt mode after selecting our sculpt head object. And let's work on our eyelids. Switch back to my pen. And with the inflate brush, I'm going to start inflating um, the upper eyelid, but first let's change our detail size, enable dynamic first, and then change the detail size to 20 because we're getting a little bit more refined in the topology, so I'll need a little bit more detail. Now simply make strokes on the upper half of the eye and watch the eyelid geometry um, start to sit in front of our eyeball mesh. There we go. That's one eyelid. Now for the bottom, let's do the same thing. Just pushing it up till we have a nice volume that we can use. Very cool. That already starts to look much more like an eye. But I want the eyelids to um, meet at a point over here. So with inflate, let's try to make that happen. Inflating the bottom, then inflating the top. Because by inflating, they will eventually meet at that point that I'm looking for. Okay, so that's a good start at least. I can uh, also switch to the pinch brush and in options, let's uh, lock the Y and X axis so that it only pinches in the Z direction. There we go. That's getting that point that I want. Very cool. Turn off X and Y lock and with my grab brush kind of move this shape around because um, the eye is looking a little bit droopy. So I sort of need to pull the outside corner of the eyelid up and the inside corner down. There we go, that's a little bit better. Let's see, I think my eyeball geometry is a little too uh, large. So let's uh, choose the eyes and then scale them down. Let's go to 0.9. Yeah, I think that'll that'll be a little better. Move it forward slightly. Okay, cool. Back to sculpt mode on our um, head geometry. Let's uh, pull our eyelids to match the spherical shape of the eyeballs. So here in the inner corner of the eyelids, it's pushed out a little too far. That's looking pretty nice. Let's start to smooth out the zygomatic bone. 
maybe pull it backwards a bit. Yeah, like that. And uh, next for the eye, I want to create the mass of flesh that sits above the eyelids that we can see right here in this reference. And I can achieve that again with the inflate brush and start to push out this eye cover fold. And then with my crease brush, we'll push in at an angle about like that. Keep it um, fairly subtle. Go back and smooth over it. Because I want the flesh to look like it sort of hooks back up toward the temple that we can see right here. So I'll continue working on that shape, trying to inflate it, keeping it smooth. Um, not too puffy because it can also lend itself to that kind of sad look that um, I'm not really going for. So let's try pulling the brow down because I think there's too much space between the upper eyelid and the brow itself. There we go, it also helps the sad look and uh, makes it look like he's not surprised. Him, sorry, it's definitely a her. And now with the eye cover fold, we're not going to do the same thing to this other side, but instead we're going to keep this crease I'm heading towards the glabella like that and smooth it out. And now with the crease brush, we'll sort of end it a little bit like that. So it's almost like a teardrop from the outside all the way to the glabella. And uh, yeah, that's looking okay. Perhaps bring it down a little bit more, smooth it out. Uh, come back here into the uh, upper eyelid, and with the crease brush, let's cut down this way around our eye. Yeah, giving more definition to that upper eyelid and where it stops. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Now, uh, at the brow, I want to go ahead and define the uh, eyebrow shape itself, the actual eyebrow hair. So. We'll sort of use uh, this image over here with my crease brush pushing out at a fairly soft strength. Push it up like that and then down towards the bridge of the nose, the glabella. There we go. Just by defining this ridge that will become the eyebrow hair, it already looks um, much more natural. And the eye cover fold starts to make a little bit more sense. And now I want to um, tighten this crease here at the upper eyelid and the eye cover fold. So we'll turn off collapse short edges. Uh, that way when I inflate this area, it will uh, bring both surfaces closer together, creating a very tight uh, crease, right like that. Let's see, perhaps I can bring the eye cover fold down towards the upper eyelid and shorten that distance to the eyelid. Perhaps uh, I'll do this with a pinch brush, again locking X and Y so it only moves in the Z axis. There we go, sort of like that. Turn off X and Y lock. And just continue to massage this shape around, keeping an eye on my reference over there. Because I want to be sure that it uh, ends up matching. There we go, I think that's a good start. So now I can turn my focus towards the tear duct and the um, inner corner of the eyelids. So with my uh, inflate brush, this shape is very easy to create simply by pushing inwards right there at the corner. Push that pretty hard. And then go back uh, a little bit inside this dimple, push out again slightly, smooth that out. That gives us a, a decent tear duct shape, but it's a little bit too wide. So let's bring that down, make it a little skinnier. There we go, something like that. Then back with the inflate brush, let's inflate around that shape, giving us a nice little ridge. And then we can continue that ridge all the way around our eyelids.
There we go, that's pretty rough. So we'll pinch it up, but that strength was too high. Let's try it again. There we go, that's much better. This is really starting to feel like an eye. But I'm missing a pretty important part of anatomy here, and that's called the infraorbital furrow. And it's this line that we see right here in the reference image. Now it's different from the bottom of the eyelid. That's a separate indention. This is its own indention, and it's where the orbicularis oculi muscle, which is a ring around our entire eye, and the bottom edge of that muscle forms the infraorbital furrow. So with the crease brush at a fairly um, soft strength, and also kind of a bigger brush like this, let's pull the furrow down, perhaps a little bit more strength. Pull it down like that. There we go. Smooth that area out. And uh, perhaps push it towards the bridge of the nose. There we go, refining that shape. Then we can come in here and inflate this bit out. There we go, I think that looks pretty nice. And also, let's see, it looks like it's pulled a little bit too far out, comparing it to our reference over here. So let's start to push that back in towards the tear duct. There we go. I think that makes a little bit more sense. But it also means that I need to bring in the arch of the nose. So actually, maybe the entire section right here of the nose needs to be brought in. Yeah, I think that's helping. There we go, with that kind of smoothed and integrated a little bit better. Let's move into the nose, specifically the nostril wing, by refining the nasal labial fold around our nostril. Let's pinch it and then also inflate. Inflate this nostril wing out like so. Smooth it out. Also inflate the tip of the nose to make it a bit more bulbous, keeping it fairly smooth. And you'll notice that I'll be smoothing a lot, particularly with a female because their features are so soft in order to make it feel feminine. So that's going to be a big part of refining all of her features throughout the sculpture. Okay, so for the nostrils, jump back to my inflate brush with a, a strong strength and start to inflate the nostril up into the nose. And for this part, let's undo that. I will uh, re-enable collapse short edges. And you'll notice that as I inflate, I start to orbit around and create a ridge so that the inflation we can see here, it starts to become more bulbous and plume up and get bigger the deeper that we get into the nose itself. There we go, I think that's far enough. And now we can come back and refine the nostril hole, inflating it up to create that ridge, keeping an eye on the reference to make sure it matches. There we go, that's not looking too bad, but this angle over here is a little bit too harsh. So let's try and soften that up. Inflating on the outside here. We wanna keep this very, very smooth. And then for the ridge on the bottom, let's see, let's pull it up towards the front of the nostril hole, something like that. Also give a little bit more curvature to the nostril um, the top half of the nostril. There we go, that's not too bad. And then add a little bit more to the bottom center of the nose by giving it a little bit of a column that connects into the oral region. There we go. 
about like that. Now the nose is a little bit too wide, so let's push it in. Maybe um, fade out the nasal labial fold a little bit better with my crease brush. And very subtly take it all the way down this way. Very, very subtle. Go back and smooth that out. There we go. I'm looking for this little ridge right here that separates the front of the nose from the nostril. That's not too bad. I think I'll move on to the mouth now, which can be achieved with the crease brush. Let's set the strength pretty high. And I want to cut in the indention where the top and bottom lip meet. So let's see if there's a better example of this. Yeah, this is a good shape. Let's match it uh, with the crease brush. Let's come in a bit closer and um, reinforce that cut that we just made. And notice the shape is almost like an upside down W coming up for the majority and then cutting back down uh, once we meet in the center. Okay, so let's pinch that cut up and also turn off dynamic topology. Well, no, I'll leave that on and just get real close. Pinch that up first, about like that. And we already have sort of that lip structure. We just need to inflate a little bit more to push the bottom and top lip against each other. So let's turn off collapse short edges. Um, that way when I inflate, the two surfaces will meet in the middle. But um, I actually need to make the cut a little bit deeper first. Back to the crease brush with Shift C. Let's cut in. Also notice that when I cut, the surface is pushed down. So let's just take that out of the equation by locking the Z axis. Then pinch the surfaces together by um, unlocking Z and locking Y and X. There we go. This will ensure that I get a very tight-lipped crease. Okay, so back to the inflate brush, unlock all of my axes, and notice the shape of the lips over here where we get a little bit more um, volume in the middle than we do on the sides. But we will just inflate those up you get that very, very nice crease in the middle. And now with the crease brush, let's define the outer edge of our lips, first at the top. And I like to cut it um, pretty strong and then go back and smooth over it, also pinching it. Do the same thing to the bottom. And typically the bottom lip is a little bit thicker than the top one. Something like that, we're getting close at least. I'll pinch the bottom ridge a little bit more and then go back to the inflate brush to add additional volume here at the bottom. There we go, that's not looking too bad. Um, okay, so the last thing that I want to do to the lips that I think is very important is the depth of the corner. Because right now it just looks like the lips were carved into a flat piece of flesh. And too often I see people leaving it like this. But um, we actually want a significant depth into the corner. So let me show you what I mean. With the crease brush at somewhat of a high strength, I just want to push in that corner pretty hard, about like that, and then cut down slightly, and now come back and inflate this up. How about we turn off um, or turn on collapse short edges to help out, keep the geometry um, even. There we go. That's getting closer. I now need to inflate on the outside of it. So let's turn off collapse short edges and inflate a little bit of a column outside down and around that um, indention that we made in the corner. There we go. And that really starts to feel more authentic. All 
Okay, I think that's pretty good for the major features. Uh, and at this point, now that I've got the majority of the mouth, nose, and eyes roughed in, I want to take a step back and talk about um, the difference between feminine features and uh, masculine features. Because right now my sculpture is kind of floating in the middle. With male faces, uh, the features are much more distinct and defined. You can really get a good idea of the skull underneath the face. But with females, even though they have all the same features, they're much more subtle, making female faces a little bit more difficult than male faces. But as I rough out a face, even a female face, I like to be stronger with the features because I can always go back and smooth them out. And that's what I need to do now, particularly with the nasal labial fold. That is way too strong. So let's start to smooth that out. Because as we see over here in the reference with this lady, we don't see a defined crease at all, but more of a subtle indention. There we go. That's looking better. A little bit more subtle and feminine. And with my cheekbones, we can see that those two are very subtle. So let's come back and smooth those out and puff them up a little bit all the way down here around the mouth. Perhaps let's um, make the cheek mass a little bit larger. And uh, I seem to have flattened out the nasal labial fold a little bit too much because I'm um, looking at it in profile, it's a little bit flat. I don't want to see a definite crease, but I do want to see an indention. So let's go back to the crease brush and cut that um, in a little bit more. Let's see, perhaps turn on collapse short edges. There we go, that helps. And now at the chin, let's refine that shape because the geometry is um, way too large, it's not been touched in a while. And you can see that I've started to outline a crease here where like the eyes that have the orbicularis oculi muscle as a ring around the eye, our mouth has the orbicularis oris around the entire mouth. And the bottom edge of that muscle creates this crease. So let's cut that in a little bit more and make it fade off as it wraps around the mouth uh, as the muscle wraps around. We can see that over there in our reference. So keep an eye on the reference as we sculpt. And uh, the chin in general is just a little bit too big, a little bit too bulbous, it's, uh, which makes it kind of masculine. So we want to refine that down, which I can do with the smooth brush. And I think it'll help to have a uh, more petite chin and make it come to a bit more of a point. So with the jawline, let's push it back this way. Update this geometry, smooth it out. And everything's looking a little bit too lumpy, which is not helping it feel feminine. So I'm just trying to refine some of these features that look a little bit too masculine, like the jawline, which is pretty strong and uh, prominent. But yeah, I think that's helping a little bit at least. And I seem to have lost some volume in the lips because we're sort of getting this expression like she's tightening her mouth together, which is not really working out. I want this to look as neutral as possible. There we go, that's a little bit better. Hopefully you can tell that by um, smoothing out and making her features more subtle, uh, we get a much more feminine shape to her. Okay, let's take a step back and see what needs to be tweaked. 
I think that her uh, zygomatic bone is uh, pushing a little bit too far uh, laterally. So let's try and bring that back. Yeah, I think that's a little bit better. Perhaps uh, move it backwards towards the ear as well. And definitely soften it. It's just way too strong. How about we try cutting more of a crease like I was trying to do earlier with the eye cover fold. There we go. I think that helps. Now into the forehead, which uh, the geometry really needs to be updated. There we go, smooth that out. And then I'm going to, with my crease brush, try to create this kind of sphere at the front of the cranium by uh, cutting in, not that strong, but um, cutting in like that. And this creates a sphere that I can then smooth out. Yeah, that gives a little bit more of a proper forehead look. Soften up the glabella. And still it's um, kind of bumping me at the bottom. I think I can bring the mouth and nose down because the chin is just a little bit too long. So let me switch to my mouse and bring those areas down. There we go. I think that uh, helps quite a bit. It really kind of changes the whole look of her, actually. Yeah, at this stage, since I've got the majority of her facial structure nailed down, I'll do one more pass to polish everything.